Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following all the news on the Next Gen consoles. And today we're focusing on PlayStation 5 and its new exclusive, Returnal. I'm Damon Hatfield, and as always, I'm joined by Jonathan Dornbush, host of IGN's PlayStation Podcast, Podcast Beyond. Beyond. Hey, Damon. And we have two very special guests this week from Housemark. We have Harry Kruger, who's game director on Returnal, and also Michael Havari, who's in marketing and biz dev. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, guys. Great to be here. So, Thanks Jonathan, I know you've been playing a bit of Returnal. What question is top of mind for you? I have. I've, I've been playing a ton and and absolutely loving it. I, I think I have uh, just a, a, a laundry list of questions about it because I think it's such a great use of the PS5, especially so early on. And so I wanted to jump in a little bit about uh, how Housemark sort of decided to take advantage of uh, specific PS5 features and really elevate those. I, I think one of the biggest things for me that I've seen is um, with Returnal, the, the DualSense just adds such a, a level of immersion, whether it's sort of the rain in Atropos or the feel of the, the different weapons as they fire. I, I sort of wanted to hear a little bit about how the team balanced implementing that without it being, I, I guess, too distracting for the player, because I could, I could imagine there's some fine tuning and tweaking that happens has to happen there. Yeah. We've had a huge partnership from Sony's side. So there's been a, a team that really knows what they're doing on the haptic side. Um, like you mentioned, once you enter, you start feeling very small nuances of things, uh, textures, if you will, in the, in the nature. Uh, we have a well-implemented L2 adaptive trigger for aim down sights and alt fire. And uh, yeah. I think it's good to finally have a housemark game with uh, that level of uh, feedback uh, to have like a really good understanding of your environment and all your sensory uh, skills. Yeah, and just to add to that as well that uh, in many ways it does come down to just you know prototyping, testing, and iterating. And I think this is just like a new element that we had to take into account uh, during that process with the uh, 3D audio for. The extra kind of spatial element, of course, that we had to be mindful of. Uh, a lot of that does come fairly intuitively because you do have things kind of positioned in space and uh, you want to just uh, translate that experience to the player. And that's what the 3D audio has allowed us to do uh, without adding, let's say, too much complexity or extra hurdles to the process. And for the controls, as Mikhail said, the adaptive triggers, that's something we, we jumped on pretty much immediately once we got the, the prototype kind of controllers in our hands. Just wanted to see how we can enrich the, the player experience without adding any uh, complexity to it in a way. And of course, the fast loading, that's another feature that maybe goes by uh, a little bit under the radar at times, but that's been instrumental in allowing us to stream this large amounts of content that you can dash through at uh, very fast speeds as a player with practically zero loading times. So that's been a great quality of life uh, feature for the experience of Returnal as well. Yeah, the the speed is something that I've, I've absolutely loved, and it, it's sort of essential to a, a game like this, where it is a loop, and if you you know are waiting too long in between runs, it might incline you to not want to keep going. And it, it also, I think, has led to the coolest uh, fast travel animation that I've probably seen in a game in some time, uh, which I'm really excited for players to see. Um, but so, sort of on that note, I think something that I, I've loved about Housemark games is, you know, no matter the format, whether it's sort of a, a more 2D view or a top down or something like this with Returnal, uh, I, I think it's safe to say uh, you all have an incredible knack for particle effects and for just dazzling sort of light shows and, and everything there. I was sort of wondering if you could speak to how the PS5 allowed you to sort of enhance what feels like a housework trademark in the the lighting and the effects work but also how how ray tracing comes into play there given that that's you know brand new for the ps5 absolutely so yeah we do we, we have had uh, our particle effects as one of the trademark let's say visual flare features of, of uh, the housemark experience for a while now uh, even dating back to you know resogun like the ps4 launch title that was one of the the key elements there and even super stardust hd uh, during the launch of the PS3, uh, you could still see that that element very vibrantly there. Uh, I think with the extra, just the raw processing power of the PS5, we just managed to take all of that and just crank it up to 13 this time, you know? Yeah. So we've just been able to have more, more of the same, but at a higher fidelity, uh, more detailed, 
and just uh, crunching through those compute shaders with just more uh, more comfort than we could before. Of course, hitting fewer obstacles along the way, let's say. Uh, when it comes to ray tracing, uh, we do have our custom global illumination solution. And we've been using that quite heavily for that uh, particular feature. And it does help give this, uh, you know, this softer, more uh, high, high definition look of the lighting, right, for our environments. And it's also used for audio, by the way. So in order to get a lot of the, the convincing kind of spatial uh, awareness there and that immersion, uh, we are casting a lot of rays, helping to collect as much uh, spatial information uh, to feed back into the audio engine so that it could produce the most uh, immersive possible soundscape for players. Just a quick note on the particle tech, which is added on top of Unreal. Um, we have a couple of uh, visual effects Oscar winners actually in-house, mm. and they're doing a great job. The tentacles are all made with this custom um, custom particle tech. So you'll see a lot of the fluid movements and everything uh, coming from our, our particle tech side. Very cool. Uh, Returnal seems to be a, a different type of game for Housemark. Is it fair to say it's a, a, a more ambitious game for you guys? And did the the power of the PlayStation Five have any influence on your decision to sort of aim bigger? For a long time, we've been wanting to sort of upgrade to 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 be able to show off what we can do. Hmm. And I think that with Sony, we've been able to, uh, for a couple of uh, generations now, gain trust and understanding of what the Housemark vision is. And I think. This is just the pinnacle of where we can show it off. And um, it's it's one of those situations where um, it's been a long time coming, but it's clearly a departure from our past catalog, that's for sure. Hmm. Yeah, and I th I'd like to add to that, that in many ways it is almost feels like the na natural next step for us, uh, the evolution of the house mark formula. So although it is by far the most ambitious and biggest title we've ever made, at its heart, uh, you could see the, the housemark creative DNA kind of uncompromised and intact, uh, we hope, in this transition, but just enriched with all of these extra new uh, features that have been entirely, entirely new for us to, to explore, such as the roguelike elements and a narrative, and just you know, getting that all in a third-person perspective action game package, which is, again, the first time that we're doing that as well now. And um, yeah, on that note, especially, I, I think one of the things that that sort of represents that balance is is the the marriage of combat with Housemark sort of trademark for difficulty. I would say uh, Returnal is definitely sort of no slouch when it comes to to being tough um, in really exciting and engaging ways. And, and there are uh, fights and encounters and enemies that I don't want to spoil, but are, are sort of a treat in the way they they bring the the history of Housemark into a new form. Uh, but I was sort of wondering if you could speak to the the studio's approach for difficulty on this game. You know, I, I was wondering if being one of the first, you know, big PS5 exclusives had any impact on deciding how to, you know, fine tune the difficulty depending on the player base or if it was really wanting to stay true to the roots of what the studio wanted to make. So basically, it's very true to our, you know, arcade roots. Um, it is the vision from Harry Kruger. He's the the sort of game director and and really the visionary that's been held up. Um, you know, we started development four years ago, and I don't think the core vision has changed that much. And um, Housemark games are known for their, let's say, challenge. There's usually a difficulty to it. Next Machina, for example, you know, you can go through the game in, on easy, but you'll never get to the the last level, and then there's other unlockables and so on. So there's an easy to learn, but the hard to master kind of a, a mentality at work there. Absolutely, yeah. So it does come down to that uh, our arcade roots. So as Mikhail said, easy to pick up and hard to master is a great way to uh, to summarize that. And if you look at all of our previous games, they are structured around that uh, that philosophy. And challenge is always an integral part of that. I do feel that without uh, Without a challenge, you cannot have that strong sense of accomplishment, you know? And the closer to the verge of uh, frustration that you get, the bigger the feeling of triumph when you do eventually prevail. And of course, with our previous games, uh, as you know, we have implemented more traditional kind of difficulty options. With Returnal, we wanted to approach it in a way 
that uh, every run is entirely unique. And the roguelike formula does allow for a lot of unpredictable swings in how uh, an experience, how a, a certain session might play out. So as we were saying before, Jonathan, uh, if you take one too many gambles, you get a little bit overconfident, uh, you might end up digging your own grave, so to speak. But if you play a little bit more conservatively, try to play it safe, you can kind of like, in a way, tune the difficulty of that particular session uh, to your desired skill level. So we're hoping that that can, alleviate, that, that can act as a bit of a pressure valve for many times that you hit those impassable obstacles. Next time that you try, there'll be always something a little bit different to just give you perhaps a little bit more of an edge to help overcome that next time. Jonathan, we're just about out of time. I think we can fit in uh, one more question. Awesome. Uh, I, I think just overall, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on, uh, you know, as you were mentioning, uh, Housemark has been there sort of at the at the start of the PS4 and, w and with the PS3 and even on the Vita as well uh, with various mm -hmm. games. And I was curious if, obviously, I'm sure there are a ton of intricacies to it, but if you could speak a little bit to uh, developing, you know, at launch for the PS5 and, and how it sort of compared to developing in the past uh, for past PlayStation systems. Well... This time, there's so many components at play. I mean, Resogun was launch day. It was a you know wonderful opportunity to make that game, and then coming down uh, to the lobby of the the New York hotel where we had the party, Resogun was well received for a small game. Now we have a big game for the PS5, and there's things that we've never done before, like narrative, you know, storytelling, and we really need to be able to innovate there. Um, not just following the trends within the industry, but really finding out what is the house mark way of uh, storytelling as well. Um, not even to talk about all the 3D audio, um, you know, the haptics, everything. So it's a lot of new things. And I think we've had a really perspective of how can that help the gameplay and work with the gameplay in ways that everything feels in tuned. So it's, it's a very unique opportunity for sure, but um, lots of new things for us as a studio as well. Yeah, for sure. There's been, uh, I think practically everything that we've been doing with, with Returnal has been uh, largely new for us. So first time doing a third person camera, third person game by itself, that would be enough to keep us busy for a few years. But on top of that, we added the roguelike elements. So explore procedural generation with uh, you know, high production values. That's been a challenge for us for sure. And of course, uh, integrating a narrative in a, in a way that uh, enhances, but does not compromise the core kind of housemark experience that we're known for. And doing all of this with a, with a new engine, working with Unreal, that we're still kind of familiarizing ourselves with and growing the, growing the company to like, uh, you know, mostly it's at 80 people now compared to, for example, 2025 that touched our, our previous games like Next Machina and such. And yeah, collaborating with other studios to help bring our vision to life has been awesome opportunity as well. So, and doing all of this towards the end amidst the pandemic too. So <laughs> it's been quite a, quite a wild ride to get here and we're incredibly proud of what we've been able to pull off with Returnal. Well, I've been really excited to jump in. I'm a big roguelike fan myself, a little bit jealous of Jonathan that he's already been playing it. Uh, but by the time our viewers are watching this, it's going to be out in the wild. So I'm excited to jump in. Uh, Harry and Michael, thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations on the release of Returnal. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. It's been a pleasure. Before we go, we have a, a poll for you to vote on for next week. We want to know now that Returnal is out, what upcoming PS5 games are you looking forward to the most? Could it be Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, Deathloop, Horizon Forbidden West. Make sure to vote at IGN.com and we'll share the results with you next week. We have the results of last week's poll. We asked you, what device are you most likely to use Xbox Cloud Gaming on? Choices were smartphone, tablet, or laptop. And the winner was smartphone with 42% of the results. Smartphone followed by laptop, then tablet. Now you know. And that's it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. Thank you to Jonathan. Thank you to both Harry and Michael, our friends at Housemark. We'll be back next week, same time. Same day, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern on Friday morning with more next-gen console watching. We'll see you then.